Hello. In this lesson, we will look at web filtering and the development of this technology. During the early days of the Internet, there were little or no restrictions on what websites you could visit. This was fine and dandy. But unfortunately, some of those sites had malware that could infect the browsing computer. Or sometimes a website contained content that others objected to. This can be controversial, but these two reasons, security and objectionable content, formed the impetus for the development of web filtering technology. So what is a web filter? It's an application that examines incoming web pages to determine if some or all of the content should be blocked. The web filter makes these decisions based on rules set in place by the company or individual who installed the application. There is a corresponding interface that allows you to configure the rules and determine what gets blocked and what gets through. A web filter can also establish different rules for different types of users. For example, at home, a parent may want to enforce stricter rules on children than adolescents and adults. In the United States, libraries were the first to install web filters on their publicly accessible computers in response to community pressure. The federal government passed the Children's Internet Protection Act, CIPA, in 2004 requiring all computers in the public library to have web filters if that library accepted federal funds for computers that access the Internet. These measures were met with a mixed reception, some compliant and some resistant. As web filtering spread from libraries to schools, some argued that censoring information, no matter how nefarious or salacious, countered the mission of libraries and education. What's more, Sometimes the filters were not sophisticated enough to distinguish between art and a lewd photograph, or the filters blocked literature because of an expletive. These legitimate complaints about the limitations of the technology prompted the developers of these applications to design more sophisticated filtering techniques and to make filter configuration more granular. While the initial motivation was to protect children, once the technology was developed, its utility for other purposes was immediately recognized. Information can be censored for religious, political, or ideological purposes. In addition, previous misdeeds of a government could be expunged from the digital record. Still, on the other side of the ledger, browsing was made safer by developing filters that could block adware, spam, viruses, and spyware. Today, Web filtering forms the first line of defense against web-based attacks. In addition to client workstations, web servers, and ISPs, web filters were added to other network devices, such as firewalls, proxy servers, sandbox technology, and wireless access points. How does a web filter work? A web filter can consult a URL database that lists websites and domains that are known to host malware, phishing, and other harmful tools. With over a billion active websites on the Internet, this can be an onerous task. The URLs found on this naughty list are also known as a blacklist. There can also be a whitelist, which is a sanctioned list of URLs. Another method that can be used is a filter that looks for a keyword or predefined content. As noted earlier, the problem with this method is the number of false positives, that is, it can inadvertently block legitimate content, such as art. Machine learning may overcome this deficiency. Other types of web filters, such as the Google search engine, use machine learning to help you find what you're looking for. Like for all other network security devices, machine learning is the next step in building more effective web filters. Fortinet has integrated web filters into a number of its products, for example, FortiClient, FortiGate, and to wireless access points 40 AP. Thank you for your time, and please remember to take the quiz that follows this lesson.